Welcome to part four of our journey in the certified entry level Python programmer course. And it is time for us to talk about a couple of topics regarding the logic and the structure that we are going to be using in Python. Yeah, Python is going to be made up of, as we'll see, our Python code of keywords and the whole meaning of our Python programs are going to be made possible thanks to instructions, as we'll talk about. And then we have indentation that we must use at times in Python. So we'll discuss that, of course. And finally, we'll be using comments in our Python code like we would use comments in other programming languages. So when we are working with Python, there's a bunch of words that we're going to be learning, and these words are reserved, meaning we can't use them for other purposes in Python. For example, you can see the word if. Look over in the fourth column. Uh, actually, it's the fifth column on the right. And if you look at the third entry down, it's the if keyword. This is reserved. I can't create a variable, for example, in Python and name it if, because this is a reserved keyword and it's going to be used, you'll see it later on in this video, we use it in a famous if statement. So keywords are reserved. And the great news is when you are working with Python, these keywords will be colored in orange. So the colorization reminds us of the reserved keywords and it helps us write great code, that colorization, as we'll see uh, again and again and again in our videos. Now, remember, Python is constructed to carry out our instructions. That's what's really the magic behind Python. So when we go in and we say x equals 10, Python knows that it is to create a variable named x and set that variable to the integer value of 10. When we say print and then our parentheses and quotes hello world, that is understood by Python as us calling the print function and it printing whatever string we provide it in this case, hello world. Yeah, these instructions that Python is carrying out for us is really the magic of Python. Now, one of the things that some programming language folks dislike about Python is it is mandatory that we do indentation in places. You see, other programming languages will use like curly braces in order to keep blocks of code together. And the people that use those programming languages are really biased and they love that. But we must get used to indentation inside of our Python because it is going to be critical for us. And wow, isn't that weird how some of the letters ran together? I think that has to do with me creating this slideshow on a Mac and then uh, running it on a Windows machine. It did some font substitution and stuff got a little crazy there. That's all right, though. We can still read it. So anyways, uh, notice x equals minus 4 is us setting a variable of x to negative 4, and then we have our if statement. If x is greater than 0, then we need to do something. Print positive number, else print negative number. Notice that the indenting must take place here. Let me prove that to you. Let's go over to Python, why don't we? And there it is. Here's our Python idle environment. And let's set, as you can see here, we have set x to a negative 4. And we should get the negative number printed out as a result of this simple if-else statements that we are doing inside of Python. So I'm going to go up and say, run this module. And what happens? Sure enough, it runs and it reports we have a negative number. So that works beautifully. 
Now, what I'm going to do is go in and get rid of the indentation. We're going to do a file save. We are going to go up to run and run this module and notice we have an error. Yeah, expected an indented block after the if statement. So indenting here is mandatory. Now, how should we indent? Well, we're going to be talking about best practices when it comes to the Python code. And the best practices tell us we should do four spaces. Yeah, we should be doing four spaces. By the way, I have to stop the running of this program right now. So one way I could do that is just to close the file. Let me now reopen that file. And that was indentation. There we go. So I'm going to go in and put in one, two, three, four. The recommended way to do it. That is four spaces. One, two, three, four. Now, you can use tabs. So if you wanted to, I could go in and just hit tab on the keyboard and then tab on the keyboard. Notice the four spaces in the tab are the exact amount of space. You could use like two spaces if you wanted to, and that would work just fine. You could even use one space if you wanted to, and that would work just fine. Python tells us, look, whatever you're going to do for the indenting, whether it's one space to four spaces or a tab, do it consistently throughout the entire module that you are building. So yeah, we're going to want to make sure we are consistent with this. I do the best practice of my one, two, three, four spaces. And one, two, three, four spaces. So we will save this now that it is all fixed up and properly indented. Now, the other thing that we need to be aware of when it comes to Python, in addition to this requirement of our indenting, is we need to remember we can use comments inside of our code. And notice everything in red here is a comment, and it is none other than the hashtag. Yeah, the pound sign, as some of us call it, that make this magic happen. Let me close that window and bring up a comments example that I have. And look at how great this is. Anytime we use the hashtag, anything following that on that line gets red colorization because it is a comment and it is ignored by Python. So Python comes in here and sees x equals 10, and then it sees print x. So if I execute this, if we run this module, sure enough, look what happens. It just prints the number 10. Yeah, because that's all there is for it to do. X is equal to 10 and then print X, which is 10. So all of this stuff is just comments. Notice this is an example of a comment that runs over multiple lines. Note we need a pound sign on every line. Also, notice that you don't have to start the line with the comment. So there is x equals 10, which is processed by Python. And then I have the pound, a variable named x set to the value of 10. So we can do the comment right there as well. Now notice comments are going to be great to describe what is happening in your code. And comments are also great because you can have something in your code that's commented out that you can then uncomment. Yeah, look at that. So now I've quickly set X to 20. If I do a file save here, and then I run this module, now the program runs and outputs the value of 20. So comments are fun that way too. You can have something commented out in your code so that it's easy for you to implement that. 
Notice you will develop your own kind of best practices, like do you do a space after your hashtag or not? As you can see, I like to do spaces. Some people do not. I would recommend as you develop your best practices, always think about consistency. Yeah, so here I was using the space after my hashtag and notice I did that consistently so it gives the code a more clean and consistent look. Something else to think about when it comes to comments is we're always going to try and make our code as self-commenting as possible. So for example, instead of this comment right here saying what this is doing, I'm gonna get rid of that and I'll rewrite my code so that it says my variable one, for example, is equal to 10. Yeah, and notice that makes much more sense of what is going on there. And so now I'll just do that substitution and yeah, I don't need a comment anymore for that line because it's self-commenting. My variable one is equal to 10. Yeah, so always try and make your code as self-commenting as possible, but don't worry about using comments to explain stuff. That is, of course, a best practice when you are working in Python. Now, before we wrap up here, notice we have covered our objectives, keywords, instructions, indentation, and comments. We've covered those just as we need to, but I did want to just wrap up by pointing out something to you that we did inside of this video that I haven't introduced you to yet, and that is the concept of creating these scripts inside of your idle environment. So you can come in here and you can say file, new file, and I will go ahead and immediately save this. I'll just save mine into my downloads folder and I'll call it demo. And this is gonna get a .py extension so that Python can run it. And notice inside this demo.py file, you can go ahead and start to practice with your Python. So one of the things we learned, and we'll be getting into variables in much greater depth later on, but one thing we saw is we can have like a my variable one equals something. And then of course we can print that my variable one. Yeah, we can print that value. And we don't need the quotes when we are printing a variable. So now I can file, save this thing. I can then go up to the run and I can say, check the module, see if there's any errors. And notice it just returns me here to the run window. So clearly there were no errors in that code. And now I can get back, do my file save. Uh, I had already done that. I can now run the module. And what does the module do? Well, of course, it prints out the value of 10. So great stuff here. We can begin creating these .py files to store and run our practice code. And remember, under the run menu, you can do a check module to see if you have any errors. And once you've confirmed you do not, you can go ahead and run your module in order to see it run inside the idle shell. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this episode where, as you know, we took a detailed look here at four major aspects of the logic and structure of Python 3. We talked keywords, we talked instructions, the magic of Python really, and our mandatory indentation we will need to do at times. And finally, we talked about using the hashtag and comments inside of our Python code. Thanks so much for joining me. Can't wait to see you in the next video.